Hey everybody, my name is Regina and today I'm going to show you how to use Asana as a task management system for you and your team. I've got three different ways to show you using the Mashari method how to do this. Um, and so I'll start with the very most basic version of using Asana as an, as an agreements tracker. Um, this is going to be super low level um, and it's going to be really easy to set up mostly because there's not a ton of setup that has to happen. Um, and I'll also go ahead and take the time to walk through the pros and cons of using this version. So let's go ahead and jump into it. As you can see, I have my Asana pulled up um, and I'm going to go ahead and click into my tasks. And this is the most basic version of an agreements tracker. So you can see here with Asana, there's this task name section. You've got the due dates if there is a due date. And then there's this column called projects, which we'll get into in a little bit. I'll go ahead and hide it for now because we don't need it um, for this version of the agreements tracker. Um, but you can see here, I've written things that I've agreed to do for other people. So for example, I said I would do a write-up on my productivity stack and I've given myself a due date by the, the end of this year to do that. Um, so that's it. It's super low level, super simple. If I click into here, you can see that there are more details. You can go ahead and use the description box to enter more things. So if I wanted to, I could provide more context here to remember, right? What that task is for. Um, and it's as simple as that. Uh, there's also these other sections here that say due later. Um, these don't have due dates uh, added to them because some of these are reminders, some of these are habits, some of these are um, uh, just recurring events that I don't want to check off every, on a weekly basis. Um, so it's relatively simple. You just have a section with due dates and a, sim a simple section without. Um, the other thing I can do is I can click into any of my other um, co-workers or colleagues profiles and see what they're up to. So as you can see, I pulled up Colleen's here and he's got his set up this way. Um, he's got his sections. One section is called meeting items. And this is where he tracks all of the um, the pieces of information he needs to fill out for meetings. So if I click here, for example, there's magic questions. He's kept a template pasted in his description section here. And every time he updates this, he adds a new uh, comment. So that's how he does it and pins it at the very top. And then anytime there's an action item that comes from that, he um, creates himself a subtask here. And as you can see, he made an action item here. He agreed to this action with somebody else um, and saved it that way. So he's got his configured slightly differently. Um, and I can go ahead and click into everybody else's. And some of these are not configured in any particular way. So I want to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of using this kind of setup. Um, obviously, the big pro here is that there's no additional setup that really needs to be done. It's fairly easy to show somebody how to add an, a task, write the task name, open up the details, add some more context and assign a due date. That's super easy. So getting people to adopt this is relatively simple compared to other action trackers or tools where they have to learn a whole methodology. Um, the, the cons of using a tool like this is that there's no consistency across the board. And that's the biggest sort of issue that we found when we were prototyping several different solutions. So here, for example, I've got these tasks up here that have due dates. I kind of created a, like a section here that says um, to December 21st. So that was my version of creating like a two week sprint. Um, and I can actually go ahead and move those back because I actually don't want them to be there. I just created this as an example. So let me go ahead and select these two here. If it lets me, I can go ahead and deal with that later too. So as you can see, I selected two by uh, holding the command key and then selecting them. And I'm just going to go ahead and move those to um, move between sections. I don't know why it's not showing up. Ha, huh? that's funny. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit more tricky to use, I think. Um, and the consistency across the board is just not there. So for example, I've got my sections configured like this. Clean has his sections configured like this. And if there are ever changes that you want to roll out org wide, you're not able to do that in an easy way. You have to tell every person to kind of edit it on their own and you have to trust that they're going to do it um, and do it in the way that you're asking them to. Um, and that brings me to my second really big point of why this version is maybe not the best when you're trying to achieve scale. Um, Colleen happened to give me access to his um, task tracker to his profile. Uh, unfortunately, nobody else did. Uh, and that should tell you that just for full transparency, we don't use this uh, version of this task tracker. Um, 
Otherwise, you know, if I click into Trisha's profile, for example, there are tasks that are visible to me. And the reason that it says it like this is because I don't have edit access. So I'd have to click into access and then click request access to manage. And then only then would I be able to create sections. And obviously you can imagine if you've got 10, 15, 50, 100 uh, people on your team, you can't possibly go in and request edit access for every single person. I've gotten the question whether this applies even if you're an admin uh, in the workspace. And I can tell you that I'm the workspace owner of this Asana workspace, and I still don't have access to uh, on an automatic basis as an admin to edit people's sections. I don't know if that was a short site. Um, on Asana's end, or if they designed it that way purposefully, but either way, it doesn't serve us in the purpose of being able to scale this up. Um, there's, and even if you did have edit access, you'd have to go into every single person's profile individually and create those new sections. I don't know that there is a way to apply a template, for example, to these. There might be. Um, if somebody here knows if there's a way to apply a template, please let me know. But I've clicked in and I've tried to figure it out and I don't see it. So um, I'm waiting for somebody to teach me how to do that if that exists. So those are some of the pros and cons of using this section. So once again, to recap, the pros of using this Asana given task tracker um, is that you don't have to do any setup. The cons are if you want a specific particular setup, like setting up two-week sprints or setting up habits or um, anything like that, anything a little bit more heavy lifting, you're going to have pretty limited functionality here. Let me know what you end up using.